this is the Provoke Prawn, and I'm going to talk you through the setup and wiring for Corsair's IQ Link system with Corsair's IQ fans and an all in one cooler. Now, the IQ Link system is interesting because the fans can be daisy chained together, clicked together, and also wired together so that you can hook up loads of fans in your system really easily. You can see the demo here with the Corsair 6500X, which actually has 13 fans in it, three of which aren't visible, all connected to a single controller, along with an LCD display and a IQ Link cooler. I'm going to show you the wiring logic and the setup for all of these things to make it really straightforward for you to understand, talk about how the controller works and more. This little control box that you can see here can control up to 24 devices now. That's 12 per port. There's one port on either side. You get the controller either with a cooler or with a triple pack of fans. And there's some complexities to the wiring that are worth knowing. So I'm going to cover what those are and explain everything you need to know so that you can end up with a really clean system that looks something like this. Individually controllable fans, all from IQ software, and a lot more besides, including the display on the radiator and more. We're going to start with Corsair's IQ Link H150i RGB. And I'll show you the setup process for this for AMD and Intel motherboards and the logic of how it works so everything's really clear and easy to understand. And then we'll get into the fans. This all-in-one cooler makes life more convenient and theoretically much easier than Corsair's traditional coolers because these fans are very intelligent and they also cable into the radiator and there's no cables coming out of the pump head which means it fits wonderfully with a rear connect motherboard because it looks really nice and neat. You'll see that we have pre-applied thermal paste here as well and you can even twist the Corsair logo around on there and take it off completely because it's only held in place with magnets. It's worth noting that this is actually modular as well. Corsair's released a little fan system that you'll be able to pop on top, which I'm going to do a video on soon, hopefully. And you can pop that off and replace it with something else, which I'll show you in a second. So it's modular and interesting. You can also buy a display version of this. But what's interesting here is the cabling. So... The IQ Link system, if you don't know already, essentially includes these little cables which allows you to daisy chain things together. So we connect one cable from the fans to the radiator. This small cable here plugs in from the fans that are on there to the radiator. And then there's another cable that connects up to this black control box. So this little controller is able to control up to 24 devices, 12 on either side. It has two connectors on it, one on the right, one on the left. You can plug in 12 devices on either side of it, which is nuts. So you plug the other end of the cable into the radiator. That's then controlling the pump and all three fans, as well as the RGB on the, the pump head as well, from that one controller. Then you can get a white controller that comes with the IQ Link fans that I'll show you in a second. And I just wanted to demonstrate this because this has three connections on it that you'll need to be aware of. So as well as those cables that plug into either side, you have the PCIe power connector that I mentioned earlier on. So this adapter plugs into the bottom here, and then you have a six pin power cable that needs to plug into this. That's the same power cable that you use for your graphics card. Then there's a micro USB cable that plugs into this and then needs to be plugged into your motherboard. And then that'll allow you to control the system via Corsair's IQ software. And then for the cooler, there's an additional small cable which plugs in on the right hand side here. And then that connects up to the CPU fan header on your motherboard, which you can see the cables laid out here to make life a little bit easier as a reference. So those are going to plug into three different points, power supply and motherboard, so that everything can be controlled by Corsair's IQ software and easily seen within that. So this is a reminder that the power supply cable from your power supply unit for your graphics card is the same cable you use here but instead of pushing it together with the eight pin connectors you split it open so that you've just got the six pins and that plugs in there obviously you're going to need to make sure you've got enough of these cables if you've got a gpu that requires four pci power connectors you might have a problem if you've got the same setup as me it won't be an issue but this is the basic wiring for that you connect up to your motherboard, to the CPU fan header, to the power supply unit, 
and then to the USB connection as well. So you can see the CPU fan connector on the top of the BTF motherboard and at the top of most motherboards is where it'd be located as well. And then the USB connection at the bottom, which is really important to plug this in. Otherwise, IQ won't be able to see it and then you won't be able to control the devices from IQ. So that's one thing. Next is making sure the motherboard's fully set up. I recommend doing this now, makes life easier, but we've got this back plate for Intel motherboards where you need to push the four corners out on the back plate so you can adjust it through the holes on the back of the motherboard. And then there's a double-sided 3M sticker there. So you remove the tape that covers the top and that will help secure this back plate to the back of the motherboard and make sure it doesn't move around too much. So just pull that backing off and then flip your motherboard over and stick this through. Now you can do it, it's in the case, but I find it easier to do it when it's outside, not just because it's easier for you to see, but also because it's just easier to access in general and to make sure it's fully attached and to put the standoffs in. So you're pushing that through so that the standoffs push through to the other side and obviously that the sticker holds the back plate in place properly. And then you flip the motherboard back over and you use the standoffs. But what you'll notice is one of the holes here isn't lined up properly. So the top left one here hasn't lined up properly with the hole on it. And that's because this motherboard actually has two lots of holes that you can use a LGA 1700 or LDA 1200 socket all in one cooler bracket for this, which is confusing, but basically you need to make sure it's out to the four corners. And then you're using the 1700 socket standoffs that are clearly marked on the bag with the cooler. Then you can see them here, they're the same size on either end. So you just screw those into those four bits that are coming through from the back plate that you put in place earlier. You just secure those down and you're basically prepping the motherboard so that it's ready to receive the cooler once we've mounted it all in the case. Make sure they're fully tightened, each of those though, before you go about installing it. That's Intel, but if you want to use an AMD board, this is an AMD AM5 socket motherboard, so I'm gonna show you the setup for that. The first step is to remove the standard standoffs that are included with the motherboard. At the top and bottom, you'll have those plastic clips with four screws holding them down. Unscrew those screws and remove the plastic clips, and obviously keep them somewhere safe in case you ever need to use them in future but we're going to remove those entirely because this system instead requires you to use some standoffs. So you'll see these little standoffs here and they're labeled inside a bag inside the cooler. Note that one end of these standoffs is actually thicker. So the threading on them is thicker than the other. You need to make sure the thick end is the end that screws into the motherboard. So into those four corners where those screws came out of. Otherwise you'll find these are loose. So just watch out for that because it's quite hard to see but they're a bit thicker on one side than they are on the other. Once that's installed, we then need to change the cooler. So as standard, it comes with Intel brackets on it. You need to remove them and put the AMD brackets on instead. They just pull out from the top and bottom, and then you can slot in the AMD ones, which you'll find are straight instead, so they have a straight design to them. So basically these slot in, they basically go in the same way that the Intel ones did, but push in, make sure they're pushed all the way in, and firmly secured. The idea of this is these will then sit down over those standoff screws that you installed a minute ago on your motherboard, and you can then secure that with some thumb screws. Obviously, I'm showing you this outside the build. You'd actually wait until you fully installed the motherboard into your case, and then you'd go about installing these. So take care there not to damage the thermal paste as well along the way. The other thing that I'm doing here is I'm using the LCD upgrade kit. Now it's worth noting that you can get a cooler with a display on it already. But if you haven't got that, you can get this upgrade kit, which essentially is just this display that sits on top. And it works with IQ Link system to then be able to display GIFs, temperature readouts and other things on there. I've done a separate video on this. But then you also need a USB connection to the all-in-one cooler as well later on. So just quickly show you the logic. Obviously, we've got one cable connected to the controller. This is controlling the pump, the display, all three fans. And they're all basically connected, daisy-chained into the controller in this way. Fairly simple. For the rest of this build, I'm using Corsair's RX120 RGB fans. This is the starter kit, which includes three fans, the controller, some connectors, screws, and two cables. You can daisy chain these fans together naturally, 
and connect them up and then control them via Corsair's IQ Link software. And as I'll show you, you can actually mix and match them with the fans on the cooler as well. So any of Corsair's IQ Link fans can be set up. But these are more affordable fans, so they make for an interesting alternative. It comes with the similar controller to the one that's included with the cooler, but you won't necessarily need to use this depending on how you do your build. I end up just using one controller, but I want to show you the wiring logic for it. So for example, we've got a group of three fans here connected up to a controller. It needs to be connected to the USB header on your motherboard and to the PCIe power on the power supply unit. And that would be the standard connection for those fans. For connecting the fans together, you've got four clips here that you can see. These are little clips that go between the fans that allow them to connect, but they're different in style. So pay attention to this because it will make a difference. You'll see one of them has these little notches on it. This slots into the hole which has no connector in it. So you can see at the top of the screen here, there's a little hole there with notches on either side, but there's no gold contacts inside there. So you push that little connector inside there. And then the other one has this one which has a hole running through the middle of it which basically allows the two connectors on either end of the fan to join together. So you push these into that part and then you get your other fan that you're going to lock together. And now look, you'll see that you can't run it that way because the connector's in the wrong place. The connector on the fan has to line up with the connector on the other fan so that you can slot them together. Obviously, if you tried to slot them together the wrong way around, it wouldn't work because those two gold contacts inside the fan wouldn't connect to one another. So pay attention when you're doing this, obviously taking care not to push the wrong thing into the wrong hole and then to line up the fans correctly, don't force them in together. They do actually have a little bit of magnetism to them and this is the same across all the IQ Link fans. The logic here basically is how they just can lick together nicely and connect up. So that's a fairly straightforward way to connect the fans in their daisy chain logic and then you use a cable as well now the cables can go from fan to fan but they can also go from the fan to the controller again watch out that you don't try and plug the cable into the wrong port as in this one here at the top like i'm doing because that obviously doesn't have the connector in it it's actually at the bottom part of the fan here you'll need to pay attention to this logic especially when you're installing the fans in the case to make sure that your cables are going to be facing in the right direction and that you can reach the controller with them. This long cable can then be run through the case and plugged into the controller so that they can control those three fans. And obviously you have the little cable that you can use to daisy chain in some extra fans as well. If you buy a single pack, you get the fan and a single cable now. You didn't used to get a cable, so this is a nice addition. And obviously some screws as well and the connectors so I would recommend if you're copying my build or doing something very similar, get two triple packs and then some single fans. The reason for that is you make sure you get enough cables because you get the longer cables included with a triple pack as well as the shorter cables. The shorter cable is perfectly useful for connecting and daisy chaining fans together though. And that's the idea. So for example, if I use this as an exhaust fan at the rear of the case, as I'll show you later, you can connect one cable to that and then the other cable connects up to another group of fans which in turn then connects up with a longer cable to the controller or to the all-in-one cooler for example as I'll show you. So it's really easy to daisy chain these things together and as I said you can have up to 12 devices on one side of the port so you can really easily group multiple fans together but two triple packs will make your life a lot easier here. As you can see, you can do something like this. You could have three fans connected to another lot of fans, connected to one port and then connected to another lot of fans. The system is really straightforward and easy to use. So with the cooler, obviously this comes with the Corsair's QX120 fans of standard, which are the fancier version of the fans. These are nicer IQ Link fans. They're more expensive though. And I'm taking them off in this instance because as you've seen already, I'm mounting the radiator and setting it up so that we have an intake set up. So we're pulling air from the back of the case through the radiator to cool it down. I've found this is actually the best way to do it. This fan setup also includes temperature sensors on each fan, which is why these are more expensive. But if you want to, you can flip them over 
to achieve the same results that I'm going to. So intake through the radiator to keep it cool. I've done a video separately on where the best position is for your radiator in your system, but this is what I'm doing and you'll see the results of it in the review of the case if you subscribe. Now, you can alternatively replace the fans that are on there with the RX120 fans. And I'm going to do that because I want to have the same uniform look throughout the case. I want to make sure I'm using the same fans across the entirety of the case. This might seem illogical because I'm swapping the high quality fans with the cheaper fans. So you probably wouldn't do this, but I want to show you why I'm going to do it because I'm going to use the QX fans on the other side as a push pull setup later on. So you can swap the fans out and then plug them in in the same sort of way that they were connected already. So you're just connecting those up and then I'll show you the full wiring for that in a little while. So now installing the motherboard in the case, now it's fully ready with obviously the bracketing ready for the all-in-one cooler. So once that's done and installed, I'm then going to install the radiator. Now in this instance, I'm side mounting the radiator because I found that's the best way to do it for me personally. During my testing, I've showed this in other videos, but if you want to top mount, you can do that instead. But I'm going to remove this tray and install the radiator on here so I can then go about the process of installing it. Now, normally you'd use the small screws to secure the radiator to a radiator tray or to the case, but I'm doing things slightly differently just to show you how you can do it the system if you want to, and if you want to copy me. So I'm going to mount it so that the tubes are at the bottom of the radiator. And as Gamers Nexus explained, you basically want to make sure the pump isn't the highest point in the system. And we're going to install that here and basically put it in so that the radiator is going to be facing towards the front. And then what I'm doing here is I'm going to use some RX fans as a push-pull setup. I will actually swap these for the QX fans in a minute, but I wanted to show you how to do this so you could basically put your fans in the same direction. Use the radiator screws that are included with the cooler because they actually supply enough to do push-pull. Push them through the fans, through the tray and into the radiator and secure those down. This will then allow you to just basically put the radiator with six fans back into the case and you'll have extra cooling. It is possible to do this if you want to. So this is a nice way to do it because it means you can put the RX fans on the front of the radiator where you'll see them and then the QX fans as I'll show you in a minute when you swap them out on the other side. So you can basically still use the high quality fans but also the other fans so you can maintain the same aesthetic. But it's important to make sure the fans are facing in the same direction. So the blades are facing the same way so that air is being pulled from the rear through to the front. Now, obviously, you can connect them together. So you see we've got the two connectors here. So you run one of those short cables from one set of fans to the other so that those cables are connected together. And then as a reminder, the ones on the front are then connected to the bottom to the radiator and then the radiator is connected to the controller. So this is basically daisy chaining the fans together, connecting it all up so that it will all work nicely. You can see that here, got cables on either end, but once you install it in the case, those are basically hidden away quite nicely. Now we're going to mount the cooler back into the case. Now obviously this is going to vary depending on the case you're building. And I should have mentioned, you might not always be able to do push-pull. There's plenty of space in this case at the rear to be able to do that, assuming that you mount the radiator tray in the forward position. So there's actually two positions that you can put this in. But if you can't do this, then you could obviously use the small screws to install the radiator to the radiator tray or to the case instead and just have one lot of fans. There's no need to do six. It's just I wanted to be able to do it to show you how you could do it and to show that it is possible to connect all of these up with the IQ link system so you can easily daisy chain all these things together. I want to point out the way I've mounted the radiator. A lot of people like to put tubes at the bottom because they're worried about air bubbles getting into the pump over time. So having tubes at the bottom of the radiator can stop this as long as the pump isn't the highest point in the system, which it isn't in this case because the top of the rad is. But you can see I am wanting to test here essentially what this looks like whether the tubes are going to stretch, whether they're going to interfere with anything, how it's going to look, what the impact's going to be on the graphics card placement. Because in a previous build I did in a different case, it really caused problems with pushing right up against the GPU. This is obviously going to vary depending on what graphics card you've got, so it's worth testing beforehand. 
In this case, obviously with this rear connect GPU, we're gonna plug it into the motherboard and see how we fare. As you'll see, this actually works out quite well, but I'd suggest it might be worth testing with your own graphics card if you're using something different to work out whether it's gonna be a problem for you. The longer the card, the more of an issue maybe, but what I found actually is the tubes fit quite nicely behind this graphics card when it's placed in the motherboard, as you'll see in a second. The benefit here of doing this, of course, is it allows you to test beforehand because you don't want to get to the end of your build with the CPU block fully installed and obviously the thermal paste has then been applied and then you have to remove it and maybe flip it around because that would cause bigger problems. So it does go over the end with the tubes basically at the end of the graphics card but there's also a big enough gap that you can push it behind the GPU and it will sit back there and what I've found is this doesn't put any unnecessary pressure on the graphics card and it's also not going to cause problems, I'm pretty sure, in terms of the temperatures interfering with each other and with issues there. It also doesn't cause a problem with blocking the RAM as well. So now we're confident about that, we can pull the plastic cap off of the CPU block and then install it over the CPU itself. So basically carefully placing this down. Note I've got the tubes on the right hand side here and we're putting this down over the top of the standoffs we put down before. And then you use the four thumb screws to secure the cooler to the CPU. Go corner to corner, so from one corner to the opposite corner diagonally. And I'd also recommend using a screwdriver to make sure these are fully tightened up across each of the four corners. Don't over tighten, just screw until it won't go any further. Don't force it because you don't want to damage anything. But you do need to make sure this is secured nicely. Otherwise, it might not cool as effectively as you'd like. And then once that's done, you can see that's secured nicely into place. And this is the final result of that and how it looks. I don't think aesthetically it's as nice looking as it would be if the tubes were at the top, but it still does work. Next up, we're going to install the controller, which I'd recommend just taking that SSD tray off of there if you're not going to use it and putting it up here. I found this is the sweet spot for this installation. It's just about the right distance. The USB connection on this isn't very long, it's worth noting, and obviously don't forget to plug the power in, but the USB obviously has to stretch to the bottom of the motherboard. There aren't many other places that you can put this really, unless you perhaps just dropped it at the bottom of the case. But what I found is that one cable is potentially an issue. It is slightly magnetic, that controller, but you do get some stickers if you want to, if you want to secure it fully into place instead. So the long cable that's coming from the bottom of the radiator from the front of the case is running through here and plugging into the controller. As a reminder that the front fans are then plugged in to the radiator and the back fans are plugged into the front fans. So all of those things are connected together to this controller on one of those ports. Then plug the PCIe power in, the USB connection and the CPU fan header to make sure everything's connected up fully. And that's obviously just the radiator for the cooling for that. But we need to make sure all these cables are fully connected so don't forget that cpu fan header cable i recommend doing a test boot at this point just to make sure these fans turn on and the display works and everything else is set up nicely one of the things i noticed here for example is that i forgot to plug the usb cable in that is required for the display but also the fans aren't lighting up properly the reason for that is actually because the firmware needs updating so for the controller, historically, you could only plug seven devices in per side of the controller. So there's actually more than seven at the minute, which is why the fans aren't lighting up. So you need to go into Windows to update the firmware on the controller via IQ. So the fans on both sides are working, but the lighting isn't. If you see the same thing, don't panic. You just need to go into the Windows first to update that. So as long as the fans are spinning, it's fine. But you do also need to plug in the USB connection from your motherboard to the bottom of the radiator so that the display will be recognized properly in IQ and you can adjust it to show the various different temperatures and other things that you'd want to on the pump head. This black cable runs to the bottom of the radiator and plugs into the USB-C port down there and then the other end plugs into the motherboard as I've shown you. These connections will then hopefully ensure everything works nicely. I mentioned earlier on that perhaps a more logical thing to do with this setup would be to just use the fans that come with the radiator itself. Instead of putting push-pull fans with the RX120 fans, you could reuse the fans that are already included with the system. Now the good news here is this makes it more affordable and perhaps a little bit more logical. 
Although obviously the fans might have slightly different specs in terms of airflow capabilities. But if you're trying to save money and you want to copy what I'm doing anyway, then you can reuse the standard fans. But instead of mounting them on the front, you mount them at the back. That way they're out of view and you can maintain the same aesthetic throughout the front, but you can rear mount these fans. And they will still daisy chain into the system, so they'll work alongside the RX fans that we're using. Talking of which, we're now going to use another group of those fans on the top for exhaust fans. So face the fan blades downwards into the case, and these will then be pulling air from the case and exhausting it out of the top. One thing to bear in mind here is when you're installing them, you need to think about the way the connectors are going to work. So you only have a connector on a certain side of the fans. You can see where they are in this logic, for example. They're both on the side closer to me, closer to the edge of the case rather than the back. We're going to use the standard screws that come with them, or these also come with a case and as an alternative, and then mount them to the top. These fans are then going to be wired in by using the small cable that comes with the single pack to connect them to the rear exhaust fan, and then a cable on the other end to connect to the controller. So I just want to show you the logic for that and the process for it. We're going to install those and then you need to think about the cables. And this is why I recommended getting two triple packs because you get two of these longer cables included. And we're actually going to need those for the way we're doing this. Because as well as that, I'm also using this long cable on the bottom fans. So these fans are set face down in the case. So they'll be pulling cold air from below. And then the long cable from that stretches through to the back. Then I'm using a single fan as an exhaust fan, which is going to connect up to the rear. This small cable that comes with a single fan plugs into the side there and then plugs in to the other group of fans at the top. So mount that at the back and work out which way around you're happy for the cable to be when you're installing it. And I'd recommend plugging them in first before you go and install in the, the fan into the case and then seat it in there. Obviously with the Corsair logo on the side, you'll have more lighting, but perhaps you wanna hide that cable away a little bit more. So I've chosen to nestle it away like that by just turning the fan round and then screwing it into the rear. The screws that come with the fan screw in really easily, much easier than your standard screws. So they only require basically one or one and a half turns to screw in, which makes life really easy installing these. But the idea with the wiring makes it really straightforward because obviously you can see we're daisy chaining one to the other. And then you get the long cable that you can see here, plug that in and then run that towards the back. So you can then plug these fan cables in really easily and connect them up using just one controller, assuming you daisy chain the fans together like this instead of trying to run multiple cables through to the rear. But what we're going to do is with the bottom three fans, the long cable that connects to those, I'm going to run through to the back and plug in to the fans that are mounted on the radiator. That means that you've got six fans on the radiator that are connected together onto the radiator and then to the controller. And then you've got another three fans that are connected to that group from the bottom. The top fans, so the three exhaust fans on the top and the one exhaust fan at the rear, are then connected via the long cable to the controller like this. So you have essentially two groups of fans, all daisy chained together, connected up to the controller and plugged in. But you can see, once it's all set up and powered on, that the rear fans are working and the front fans are working. And this is one of the nice things about RQ Link now is that you can actually integrate the system so you can have multiple different things connected and you can daisy chain them in. The fact that the QX and RX fans will work together and are recognized in IQ as you'll see in a minute makes life a lot easier to set it up and also just do things like this so you can maybe make it a bit more affordable or accessible or just you know set your system up in a variety of different ways. Once you're in Windows, head over to Corsair's website and download the latest version of IQ and then go about installing that. This is obviously important for those firmware updates and also to control it. When you first load IQ, you might find some notifications suggesting that it has new modules to download and you'll need to restart the IQ in order to get those to work. You should also see there's an update available in terms of the firmware for the hub. As I mentioned, you can see this is Laptop quite a few versions from version 1 to version 2 
and then we make sure you update that for it to properly work. Once you dive into the Corsair's IQ software, you can also see both lots of fans listed in here. So you can see the QX and RX fans as well as the display. You can go into these and change the lighting and you'll see them listed in there and you can use the wizards to work out where the fans are going to sit and the logic for that. You can also control the fan speed individually for each of these fans throughout and choose from the various different options there. If you go into the cooler itself and you go to the fan setup settings in there, you can also tell it what fans are on the radiator. So you can see that it recognizes all the fans, but then also color codes them. So you can at a glance see which fans are on there. Now, obviously, I know that the QX fans that originally came with the cooler are on there, but you'll see that the other fans are lit up with specific colors. So you can work out which fans in this list, even if you've got the same fans throughout your case, are actually mounted on the radiator. So you can tell it that for specifically for cooling purposes, not just for syncing the RGB lighting. Click through on there, assign those, and then just carry on running your system. Under the cooler, if you go into the screen setup section, you can choose what's displayed on the display in here. So you can actually select what temperature readout or what is displayed in here. So for example, you might choose the CPU package so you get an idea of the overall CPU temperature. There are a lot of different screen types to choose from. Obviously you could put a GIF on there instead or a clock, or you could go for the dual bar setup so that you can see the temperatures of two different things at once. I like to do, for example, the CPU and GPU temperatures and color code them so you know which is which. So at a glance, you can see what the main temps are on your device really easily. So there's lots you can do within IQ in controlling the lighting, the display, and a lot more. Obviously, I'm just showing you some of the surface level things that you can do, but you can obviously go in and adjust the cooling and make sure it's running quietly and go through the steps in here. You've made it right to the end of the video, you brilliant legend you. If you've enjoyed it, click that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, and drop me a comment down below if you've got any questions. If you really enjoyed it, consider joining the channel and see the benefits of doing so. Check out these other videos. You might well find them interesting or useful. And most importantly, have a great life.